I'm going to say the same thing I said back when I covered Nemesis Lockdown by Awaken Realms. Yes, you should back this game. Yes, it will hold its value. It's kind of a no-brainer in that sense, and you don't really need to watch the rest of the video unless you want more stuff, and there is more stuff. This is going to be a jam-packed video, including five reasons why this game, why ISS Vanguard might be a game for you, why you should consider backing it, as well as five reasons why it's possibly something you shouldn't be backing, and maybe there are other campaigns where you should consider spending your money instead. But that said, there are 29,000 people who clicked notify me on launch. And granted, only 8,000 of them have backed this game so far. That being said, we're seven hours into the campaign, so there's plenty of time left for them to consider backing, plenty of time left for them to jump in on that game. And with so many eyeballs on it, I would be remiss if I didn't take advantage of, well, a giveaway, a sub push, a patron push, all that stuff. It's not something I do on this channel often. If you watch my videos, I never say subscribe, like, share, go to my patron, all that stuff. I don't push for this stuff because it doesn't feel natural to me. But once in a while, I will. And to that end, we'll attach a giveaway to it. A giveaway that no matter what happens, a giveaway with stretch goals, but a giveaway that no matter what happens, ISS Vanguard Core Box, I will be giving away a copy, my own money, I'm paying for this myself, international shipping covered, all that stuff. There'll be a giveaway to enter for the ISS Vanguard Core Box. If we hit 19,000 subs by December 31st, then I'll up it to the ISS Vanguard Commander's Pledge. And if we hit 20,000 subs by December 31st, then I will up it to an all-in pledge, all-in on whatever is in this game found, not whatever they add after the fact in the Pledge Manager, because Awaken Realms has a habit of adding a whole bunch of stuff. And to enter, to enter for that giveaway, all you have to do is head over to Quackloaf's channel and go ahead, and I'll include a link down in the description, and just make sure to go ahead and like and comment on this video. If you like it, if you get to a thousand, a thousand likes on this video, he's doing a full solo run-through of ISS. ISS Vanguard, and if, uh, what's it called, in order to enter for the giveaway, just make sure to enter something along the lines of the word busy, B-U-S-Y, you're a busy man, you seem so busy, something along the lines of busy will be the keyword to enter that giveaway, I'll include all these notes in the description down below in case you want to see that, additionally for the Patreon push, if you've been getting value out of my videos, if you enjoy them, appreciate them, it would be appreciated, it's certainly not required, it would be appreciated if you could go ahead and do something on Patreon at some point, or just bookmark it for the future, all of that. It is my goal to become a full-time content creator, and well, I would ideally like to do so without ever taking any money from publishers or anything along those lines. I want to keep this audience focused, and with that awkward, all that stuff out of the way, because I really, I really don't like doing this stuff, it just doesn't flow naturally to me. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into the campaign, and oh my gosh, this is, this is insane. One million one hundred and eighty-nine thousand dollars raised so far. 8,139 backers. I can't even say the words, it's jumping so quickly. And all of that with seven hours in. Based on when I'm filming this, it's seven hours into the campaign. There is plenty of time left to see exactly where this goes. And where this goes is a question I'd wager, wager probably in the 4 million plus range once you factor in additional conversions, once you factor in all the, the extra add-ons and optional buys and everything else they do. I would say at this point that anything under 3 million is probably a bit light in the campaign itself. And with that, I'll jump more into the campaign itself. I'll go through everything shortly, but let's start off the bat. Let's start with five reasons why you should consider backing this game, and then five reasons why you shouldn't. To begin with, the value, like I said already, this is a clear win on the value aspect. If you have any doubts whatsoever as to whether this will hold its value, or whether you get this game, you change your mind, all of that, you will 100% be able to get your money back on this game. Awaken Realms, their games are their games are sought after to no end. I love them, hate them, whatever complaints you have, there is a hot market for getting Awaken Realms Kickstarter games. You can make your money back and then some. Number two, and this is kind of tied into value but a little differently, if you will ever get this game, now is the time to get it. If you will ever have any plans, if it's a question of not getting the game at all, that's one thing. If it's a question of whether you're going to get this game ever, you should get it now. Your options are basically paying the same price, less shipping, but paying a little bit less to get this game at retail, if it's available, if it's in stock, or paying a little bit more to get three times the content, two or three times the content, which is typical for an Awakened Realms game. I just I was talking to someone yesterday and they were asking me whether $110 for a retail copy of Nemesis was a good deal, and the answer right now sadly is yes because that game is popular it's out of print it's hard to get your hands in it you could have paid a hundred dollars and gotten the kickstarter version with triple the content or you can pay 110 dollars which is already a good deal so so kind of tied into value is reason number two reason number three iss vanguard is one of the best not no one of 
Isis Vanguard is the best narrative experience that I personally have experienced in board games. Now, I'm not going to go into every single game I've ever played because there are cer there's certainly a bunch that I have not played, including Tainted Grail. But having played Seventh Content and playing Either Fields, I have to go through a list of whatever else I've played. But Isis Vanguard, for me personally, has delivered the best narrative experience that I have experienced in board games, with which gives you the feels. It genuinely gives you the feels as you grow through things, as you uncover things, as you encounter, as your actions have consequences. It really does give you the feels of exploration of impact of consequence to your action of all of that all packed into a very well fairly streamlined experience all things considered number four this game plays well solo it plays well two player i can't comment on three or four i did not I have not done that yet but both solo and two player it has been an enjoyable experience and i'll say more than that i will say that in my opinion based on what i have seen so far you could have people jump in or out of the campaign you might have to give them updates on the general overflow of the story arc and how things are going but to give you an example when i played with jesse he jumped in mid-story with just a general understanding of what's happening and he was still impacted still emotionally impacted by what was happening still felt wrapped up in that exploration there is a broader story arc going on here and then sub things going on as you explore each planet as you explore each system and then reason number five is upgrades and abilities galore. I love upgrades. I love abilities. This game gives you so many different upgrades in the form of, of the ship phase and the way they do different things and the equipment you, un you can unlock, the research projects, the ship situations, the, the blueprints you'll get for your ship, additional ships, additional hang uh, landers. This game gives you a ton of new things on a consistent, regular basis that both enhance what you can do, give you additional options, give you more things for your ship, more upgrades in terms of how much energy you're generating, how much research. This game does give you all of that stuff that just feels satisfying to have and that would be all the reasons to back it as far as all the reasons not to back it or at least the five i came up with today and i will say by the way if you watched our review most of these reasons were in the review jesse and i jesse from quackloop and i did a review on this game and in that in that review we covered reasons not to back the game which a lot of people didn't see because they were focusing on how much fun we had and they didn't actually really hear the reasons not to back the game which honestly is a fair and apt comparison because we had so much fun that we probably e weren't either focusing on the negatives. That said, there are reasons to seriously consider not backing this campaign. And to begin with, number one is going to be, this is a narrative game. This is going to be akin to other Awakened Realms narrative games like Tainted Grail, like Aetherfields. If you don't like those games, if you don't like Seventh Continent, I don't see a reason why this would change your mind. Granted, it is my favorite from the narrative game, so maybe it's a drop, maybe it's that little bit of extra drop to push you over, but if narrative games with the gameplay kind of in the background as opposed to front and center, if it is that isn't your thing, then this might not be the game for you. Don't jump into this expecting this to change your mind. Reason number two, Awakened Realms, especially recently, has had drama in the past about the things that worked or didn't work in their games, the, the smoothness, the refineness. Etherfields has problems, has critiques. I think the game is great. I'm currently going through and exploring every single aspect of that game, or most aspects of that game. But even myself, I agree that there are critiques, there are issues with their games in terms of some aspects not being perfectly refined to the level that I might want. Now, keep in mind, that is certainly a matter of opinion, but the, the controversies over Playmat or, or Awakened uh, Tainted Grail also had issues with some people complaining about the grind of the game game to a degree. So Awakened Realms, as good as they are as a company, as highly rated as their games are, and we will come back to how highly rated their games are, there certainly is some potential drama around the, the flow of how things work. I will note, Paul Grogan from Gaming Rules is being brought in for ISS Vanguard to do the rulebook, so hopefully you can expect a smooth, streamlined experience in that sense. But there's always room, especially with the, the nature of a crowdfunding uh, game where you have to you know, have day deadlines in mind even if the game isn't perfectly ready in time. There is certainly the potential for there to be issues in ISS Vanguard that you might you know, be concerned about down the road. That's reason number two. It's a, re it's a real genuine reason. Don't get me wrong, I'm backing the game all in, but it's a real genuine reason to consider not backing. Number three, the ship phase. The ship phase represents events, upgrades, all that stuff, a ton of things going on in the ship phase. But if that doesn't appeal to you, then there is a solid third of the game that you're going through, or maybe, maybe a quarter depending on the, the planet you're on, but there's a good quarter to a third of the game that is represented in that ship phase, of flipping through the ship phase, flipping through that ship book, and going through the situations, the upgrades, the blueprints, all that thing. Now, for me, most of that time, I would say 75% of the ship book is fun and rewarding, and the other 25% is maintenance that's tedious. 
But if you don't like any of that, then that is a solid chunk of time that might just not be for you. If you don't like upgrades, if you don't like the concept of, think about any game you've played. If you've played Mass Effect and you go through the idea of, you know, now I get to pick the upgrades and abilities my character gets. If that is grind to you, if all you want to do is run around shooting things in a game and you don't want to deal with the growth of your character, your ship, your progress, all those things, then that ship book, you know, it's going to be a chunk of your game time dug into something that doesn't appeal to you personally. Reason number four. And this is a big one, which is the frustration and the cost of FOMO. If you are looking at this campaign and you are tempted by that $100 pledge down here, that $99 ISS Vanguard core box, and you're like, well, that seems reasonable. I don't need those miniatures down there. I can avoid that. Well, that's great. And if you can hold tight to that feeling the rest of the campaign, then you're good to go. But keep in mind, there will be optional buys unlocked. There almost certainly, if, if history is anything to go by, there will be optional buys unlocked. There'll be additional options there. And then what, forget that. Once you get to the actual pledge manager after the campaign is over and done with, who knows the level of extras they'll have. You may well be able to spend $1,000 on this game once you factor in everything. And $1,000 might be hard. Usually Awakened Realms, their, their all-ins are closer to the range of five to $600 if you want every single thing, every single extra, everything sun-dropped. And that's a lot of money. Now, you can certainly walk away spending only $99 and getting a, a heck of a deal out of it, getting a ton of content, a much better deal than you'll ever get in retail. But if you kind of need it all or need nothing, then that FOMO will continue throughout the course of this campaign. You will be constantly tempted to add more things to your pledge and you will be faced with that frustration of, well, do I want it all? Do I want none of it? Do I just want this? I feel like I'm missing out. I feel like I feel, like I feel pushed Push to the brim of the things I want, don't want, all the decisions I have to make. And so that is reason number four. And then finally, reason number five, you just, you don't need this game. You don't need half the games in your collection. Think about all the games you have on your shelf unplayed. And think about whether ISS Vanguard is so amazingly good to be that game that needs to be added to your collection. If you are fine not getting this game, well then just don't get the game. Now to be very clear, if you ever plan on getting this game, see my first batch of reasons to get the game, then get the game here. It'll be a much better deal, it'll hold this value, all that stuff. If you are on the fence, you can back the game and then potentially sell it later down the road. But if you are certainly not getting the game and you certainly just don't want to deal with the interest of reselling anything or all that stuff, then you don't need this game and that's fine. And those would be five reasons to back, five reasons not to back, and that's the uh, the last rational thing you'll... Well, that's not actually true. I have one more rational thing to say. That's most of the rational stuff that I'll have to say this uh, this video. The rest of it's all going to be about, you know, the campaign and FOMO and all the things you should and shouldn't back and all of that. And to begin with, let's start with the reviews. The reviews for this game or the videos. Let's focus on the videos you should be watching because there are videos you should be watching. First of all, you should be watching the ISS Vanguard playthrough on the Dice Tower. Additionally, you should be watching this playthrough of us, of me and Quackalo playing the game. And the the reason both those videos are so important to watch is because it's the exact same planet that we are playing through and we have drastically different outcomes drastically different experiences that we had and what we explored what we uncovered what we did the only thing we had in common is we both died horrible deaths or failed the mission as it were i don't actually know how much death there really was but we certainly both failed the mission that's the only thing we had in common and if you are concerned about the amount of playthrough the amount of content in this game in a game that only only has 20 missions to explore well the fact that we had such different experiences even on just one planet should give you an idea and they should definitely watch that uh, watch my review with jesse and Qua with Jesse and the, the review of the game over here somewhere, Ice of Vanguard Review, watch that video if you want the full opinions of the game. We, to be frank, we like the game a lot. I am looking forward to getting this game to the collection. I've definitely gone all in on this on this game. Then watch Ant Lab's games. Ant Lab, Ice Vanguard playthrough preview. Pay attention to the end, towards the end when they finish going through the ship book and they start talking or they, they went through planetary explanation and they start talking about the game. They seem to be incredibly interested in the rest of the game and what this experience will deliver. Everyone I know who's played the game, uh, Man vs. Meeple as well, they went through it and I believe they, sh they found the ship phase actually the thing, thing that pulled them in the most, which I have no problem believing having gone through the game. Check out Rolling Solo's preview as well. There was any number of, uh, any amount, any number, any amount, I can't think of a Awards. There is a ton of content on the game and most of it is overwhelmingly positive, which is because, I mean, again, I played the game, I like the game, and I recommend the game. And with that, let's go through the campaign itself. Let's start from the top, just head on down through this incredibly different campaign, and that's because this is on GameFound. If I haven't made it abundantly clear, because I, I haven't, I haven't made it abundantly clear, this is not on Kickstarter. This is on GameFound. This is the first campaign to ever launch on GameFound, which does mean that as of right now, ISS Vanguard has the prestige on day one, seven hours into the campaign. They are the highest 
funding campaign ever on GameFound. They are the highest funding Awakened Realms campaign ever on GameFound. And that's because they are the only ever Awakened Realms or only ever campaign on GameFound. Uh, GameFound, if for those who don't know, is launching as a competitor to Kickstarter, as a competitor in the crowdfunding space. And they are doing it specifically with board games in mind, with that focus. And that, to that end, you're going to see a lot of different things that, that just feel natural if you've ever backed a board game Kickstarter. From the fact that we see over here, the next stretch goal to unlock. Stretch goals are built in. The uh, optional buys, add-ons, all this stuff is built in. The full sidebar over here, the way you have the your project, your pledge, the comments, the comments are tagged. They're bringing multiple features to the table day one, and they will continue to be doing so. That game found little hype thing aside, and by the way, again, let's just point out again, 1.2 million on game found seven hours in. So much for needing Kickstarter to, to, you know, to fund their game or any of that stuff. But with that, let's go through the game. ISIS Vanguard, if you don't already know, is an exploration-based game, which is going to be comprised of three main phases. You're going to have the planetary exploration phase where you go down to this planet, potentially encounter bad baddies or whatnot, but mostly it's going to be exploration-based as you dive down through different levels of the things you'll explore. You find a cavern, you go through that, you find a mountain you have to climb, you do whatever you have to do to get to your goal, slowly unlocking story snippets along the way. Like I said already, this is a very heavily narrative focused game with a full dedicated app in terms of, you know, giving you all that voice acted content, all that stuff. When you're done with the planetary phase, when you have achieved or failed your mission, you're going to go through a, a ship book phase where you go through ship situations, upgrading stuff, upgrading your characters, recruiting new crew, getting new research upgrades, all this stuff, which is basically represents that maintenance slash upgrading and fun of all the extra things you hopefully unlocked. Things you unlocked on the planet will be slotted into the discovery slots, giving you new abilities, new dice, new things that you can add to your ever-growing ship and crew. From there, you will rinse and repeat the cycle by having a lander phase, which is this lander over here, where you're going to land on the planet, going through a lander phase, hitting air turbulence, all those things, potentially having things happen that are not great, and then eventually going to the next planetary exploration, rinse and repeat. That is a very dumbed down, condensed version of everything you are doing in this game. But those would be the three main overviews of the of the way the game is, you know, played out. In terms of rewards, we have the ISS Vanguard Core Box at $99. We have the ISS Vanguard Commander Pledge at $179. Keep in mind, you can click Add to Pledge on these buttons because, like I said, this is not Kickstarter. This is Game Found. They have changed the way this works. You can click More Info, picked 4,941 times. If you click More Info, you can see what's comprised in this game, and you can click on any individual one of these things. And this product over here consists of the ISS Vanguard Core Box, the ISS Vanguard Stretch Goals, the Close Encounters Miniatures Expansion, and the ISS Vanguard's Miniature Stretch Goals, each of which you can click on to see more information about. That is the way, this is a whole new system, a whole new beast, and it's worth checking all that stuff out. As far as what we've unlocked, let's take a look at the, the updates. We've already unlocked over here the ISS Vanguard Lone Wolf. Okay, so over here, if we see where is the, the Stretch Goals, if we click on Updates over here, so over here on the updates, day one, the epic journey begins. We have already unlocked the lone wolf. Now this is going to introduce the first new thing, which is the concept of standalone campaigns in this game. If you don't want the whole, you know, epic journey, if you have a few friends coming over and they just want to experience parts of the game without having that full overview, then they're instead going to give you, where, where are we over here? They give you these campaign options, close encounters. Nope, not that. Scrolling down, scrolling down. Here we go. The lone wolf is going to introduce uh, campaigns or something. I can't remember what they're called. But basically the idea is that they will give you these single standalone things that are either playable on their own or playable as side missions, side quests as part of your full campaign. So you can experience them either way that you want. This additionally is a facet of the way this whole game is structured is there's a campaign that's supposed to be in the 20 hour range or so as in terms of exploration, all doing all that stuff, but you can have it be significantly more. So this is meant to cater both to people who want a shorter campaign experience as well as those who want a long drawn out experience, as well as those who want to introduce their friend to a single one shot mission. So that lone wolf aspect is going to be the first of missions, the first scenario that is going to both be available available on its own as well as as part of the whole entire campaign. Going back to the page so far, so we have that unlocked in day three, we're going to have the Tartarus expansion or something, Tartarus scenario or some sort of thing that's going to be unlocked in day three. In terms of add-ons, so far we have the Galactic Almanac, which is the, you know, for $19 you get basically this art print of all the various galaxy things, 100 to 120 page art book with extra storytelling and world building. So if that's your thing, if you want more of that, well for $19 that's what we have already. 
From there, we have miniatures. Let's talk about the miniatures expansion because that's a big deal. Let's see if we could find that down here. Going through this, this game is chock full. Let's talk about the, the the contents, I guess. So to begin with, over here we have tons. We have eight miniatures and then a ton of cards and dice in this game. The base game comes with only eight miniatures, different crew members. They can represent whatever crew that you want, so they're not locked to a particular crew member. Rather, you use them to re represent people in that mission. They have tons of cards in each of the sections of the game because you have you have science, security, recon, and engineering. Those are the four different sections of the ISS Vanguard, and each one when you play the game you kind of take on a section rather than a crew and you work with that section as they live die recover all that stuff you can have tons of dice in the game lots and lots and lots of dice and something i've consistently seen asked which i'll say it again but the dice with the most common face have a little pips of whatever around them so you can see which is the most common face having spent eight hours in this game i can tell you that occasionally you do need to look at a die to see what's on it but most of the time at a glance you know exactly what's on it because of the structure of the dice and what's the most common faces as well as what the rest of the faces are over here you have the planetopia which is going to be that book that has 20 plus planet 20 plus planets in it plus stretch goals plus extras plus who knows what so there's going to be plenty of content to go through as well as 30 star systems and the star systems and planets are not the same each star system could have a planet in it but sometimes you have star systems that don't have planets in it uh going down from there to the miniatures so over here the close encounters this is going to give you a ton of extra miniature content for your game so in the base game you have eight miniatures and then standees for all the extras you'll encounter this this close encounter is going to give you a ton of extra miniatures for your game to be very clear and this is the second time that I try to be rational. You don't need this. At least I should rephrase that. Based on my eight hours of gameplay, I don't think you need this. Based on playing either fields, I don't think you need this. This is going to be a ton of miniature content for the game that you might occasionally pull it out, but I don't think you're going to be pulling it out with enough frequency or reliability to really feel like this is essential. Am I getting it? Yes. Yes. Yes, I'm getting it because it will hold its value and it does add to the immersion to a degree, but it might add to your space on the game shelf. It might add to your cost of the game. It might add to the tedious maintenance of pulling out miniatures when you encounter them. So, so all of those are potential reasons not to get these miniatures that are going to look so beautiful and epic on your table. They're all... You should not get these miniatures in the slightest. And these landers, you certainly don't need these landers. I mean, it's not like you need them at all. By the way, for those asking, the landers do have a gameplay purpose and will potentially be moved around the planet depending on the situation. So occasionally you do need some sort of representation so you can deal with the standees or you can have these miniatures that you totally 100% don't need. And this mission equipment, you don't need that as well. You don't need any of this. And for the price of what is effectively two full games to get all these miniatures you don't need, well, you don't. You don't need it, basically. And that's, I mean, again, that's the last time I'm being sensible. I'm not saying you shouldn't get it. I think most of you are getting it, like I'm getting it. But you certainly don't need it. Uh, Paul Grogan from Gaming Rules is going to be jumping on board to write the rulebook for ISS Vanguard. So that's hopefully going to be a step in terms of eliminating those small annoyances that you might have in terms of the accessibility and clarity of the rulebook. And then lastly, like I said in the beginning, I do want to focus on Awakened Realms track record, which they are focusing on themselves, but I'll do it as well, which is look at these four games. We have Nemesis, we have Tainted Grail, we have This War of Mine, and Lords of Hellas and look at where they're ranked. Ranked 26, 85, 148, and 215. Awakened Realms has put out a ton of games, granted with drama, granted with people who have complaints and issues and this and that, but they have put out games that are well-loved by people, absolutely well-loved, and... I mean, having played ISS Vanguard, I can tell you that I believe ISS Vanguard will join the ranks. And Etherfields, by the way, Etherfields is rated an 8.6 on Board Game Geek. It just it hasn't built up enough rankings to hit that critical point. Awakened Realms hasn't put out a game yet that has been, you know rated as poor by anyone now granted there'll always be people including people watching this video who say well that's just the money talking you know nobody wants to rate their 200 hundred dollar board game a uh, seven they want to tell themselves that it's so good and i hear you it's there's truth to that at the same time there are plenty of 200 hundred dollar board games that don't have the same degree of ranking that awaken realms games have and that is basically going to be ISS vanguard that's going to be most of, of everything in terms of this in terms of the campaign in terms of everything going on on game found i wonder at this point in the in the video whether i've mentioned kickstarter incorrectly a few times oh shipping we should talk about shipping shipping is going to range from well it's gonna be expensive and oh yeah this is a big one do not go with single wave shipping do not go with single wave shipping go with split wave shipping it is important uh important is the wrong word if you've ever backed an awaken realms game and you've gone with single wave shipping and you've been happy with that and you've been fine with that then great go for it but ultimately that extra cost you pay to get the the game in two waves means you will have this game in your hands earlier you will be able to sell it earlier if it's not a game for you you'll be able to see to to jump into that hype people will be posting pictures of their game and you will feel left out i highly recommend paying that extra cost and getting split wave both into in terms of if the game is for you you'll have an extra year and a half playing the game 
And if the game isn't for you, you'll be able to sell it as well as redirect your second pledge when you need to. So both whether the game is for you or isn't for you, I do recommend split wave shipping in terms of getting that. Lastly, and the last thing I'll note is that I will have on Wednesday, I want to say, I'll, on Wednesday I'll have a play this, not that video comparing Etherfields and ISS Vanguard and telling you which one I would rather, which one I would pick and why, going through that full breakdown of two games that I have been immensely enjoying playing. And that is this video. That's the everything, basically. I mean, it's ISS Vanguard. It's, it's a lot going on here. If you want more content, I have a how-to-play video. I have a review video. I have a ship phase gameplay. Quacklobe has a, has a planetary gameplay. And then as well as these other videos over here. Until next time, I've been Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I'm always Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, have a good one.